San Francisco is home to some world-class chocolatiers like Scharfenberger, Guitard, Ghirardelli, Teuscher, and Cho. This morning, I'm here in Berkeley, California to take the Cho Chocolate Factory Tour. Even from out here, I can smell the chocolate and it is absolutely divine. Let's go inside. The name Cho is actually taken from the phonetic spelling of chocolate. The company was originally started by Timothy Childs, who used to be a NASA space shuttle contractor, and Carl Bittong, who is like a 40-year veteran of the chocolate industry. The venture is angel-funded by Louis Rossetto and Jane Metcalf, who you guys might know as co-founders of Wired Magazine. And after they sold off the magazine, they decided to become angel investors. So Rosetto and Metcalf originally knew Childs through technology. When Childs left the CEO position in 2010, Rosetto and Metcalf took over the management of the company, and they've been managing it ever since for the last seven years. Fun fact number 17. In one Cho single origin chocolatey bar, there are about 60 cocoa beans, or about one cocoa pod. We're gonna start off by sampling some Cho chocolates. Its luxury artisan chocolates are based more on the philosophy of flavor profiles rather than on cocoa percentages. There are four basic flavor profiles which we'll be tasting today. There's chocolatey, fruity, nutty, and citrus. This is the single origin dark chocolate, chocolatey flavor profile. It's single source from Ghana and it's the first bar cho ever created. It's got a deep, rich, and hopsy flavor. And that one's about like 70% Cocoa. The other 30% is uh, mostly so, sugar. This is a single origin dark chocolate fruity flavor profile and is sourced from Peru. It's got a 68% cocoa content. Um, I definitely taste a lot of like cherry to it, that also raspberry as well. A few years ago, Cho introduced their milk chocolate line with a 53% cocoa content with Peruvian and Ecuadorian beans, higher than normal milk chocolate. Target flavor is high quality chocolate ice cream. Mm, it was really good. So it's meant to be a little bit sweeter. Um, it's definitely very fudgy. The original milk chocolate bar was still not sweet enough, so Cho produced a second 39% milk chocolate. It's got a more caramel characteristic. I said that this one is definitely their best seller. This one here is the toffee and orange. That's got really nice little bits of orange in it. And the toffee in it gives it a little bit of a crunch. This is a cocoa pod. There are different varieties and each pod contains between 20 and 60 beans. These are harvested beans and still have the husks on them. The beans are processed into cocoa nibs. The virgin flavor is rich and bitter when crunched. For chocolate manufacturing, the cocoa nibs are melted into large blocks like this for transport. It's composed of cocoa solids and butter. This is what the cocoa butter looks like when extracted. Among other things, pure cocoa butter is used to make white chocolate. Fun fact number four. Chocolate flavor is very complex with over 600 aromatic flavor compounds compared to red wine, which has 200. Now we're ready to go into the factory and do our tour. This is my outfit for going into the factory. We were required to scrub up and disinfect so we don't bring any outside contaminants onto the factory floor. So I wasn't able to film inside the factory itself. There are some uh, USDA rules that uh, prohibit us bringing in uh, photography equipment, but just to kind of walk you through the process real quick, chocolate that um, I showed you before, the cocoa block, actually starts out in a melter, and it sort of sits in that melter and gets brought up to temperatures of about 120 degrees for about 20 hours. After that, it gets transferred to another machine called the Big Mac. And the Mac machine is a concher, which essentially is refining or grinding up the cocoa to be even more fine than it already is. And so what they're trying to do is to get the particles, the cocoa particles, down to 15 to 20 uh, nanometers. And that's 
super, super fine. And that's really where you get the difference between uh, regular kind of commercial chocolate and these types of really fine artisanal chocolate. So that conching process takes probably about another 20 to 24 hours. The chocolate is then transferred over to a tempering station and the process of tempering really is uh, bringing the temperature down and up multiple times. The tempering is actually key because it ensures a very high quality chocolate and it does a couple of things. First, it prevents the chocolate from separating and when it doesn't separate, it actually handles better when it's at the customer. So it doesn't melt in your hand as easily uh, or melt as readily when it's being transported or sitting at retail. Second, it gives the chocolate that snap. And third, it's giving the chocolate a really beautiful sheen to it. Here's a bit of the drinking chocolate that we were offered. They just made it fresh this morning and it's made with uh, cho chocolate mixed with uh, gelato. Um, local chocolate mint chip gelato that they got just down the street. That's really delicious. It's super rich and it's got a little bit of a hint of mint to it. Chocolate's also really smooth. There are four components to the flavor profile. The first one is genetics, or actually the varietal of the cocoa bean that they're using. The second is something called terroir, or the agricultural or land that the varietal is grown in. It's kind of similar to wine in that certain regions produce certain flavor profiles. The third is in the fermentation process, which uh, is done right there on the farm itself. So that's about 75% of the process. And of course, the last has to do with the actual manufacturing of the chocolate, which is what they do right here in the factory. And that's one of the competitive advantages of this company, is that they work directly with the farmers in order to perfect the agricultural process to get the products that they want. Traditionally, cocoa is produced in depressed areas where uh, the cocoa beans are also treated as a commodity, so very rarely do the farmers actually taste the end product. So Cho is trying to change that by working directly with the farmers uh, in order to refine the agricultural processes to affect the end product. They're working with a lot of these collaboratives and have installed what are called flavor labs on a lot of these farms. And there's a lot of education that is going into training the farmers on uh, tasting the end product and being able to identify um, flavors and better refine their palates. They will often host tastings for the farmers where they'll bring in foods from all over the world because you know, in Peru or in uh, Ghana, they don't necessarily have access to flavors like raspberries, for example. And so trying to have them identify what a raspberry uh, flavor palette tastes like is difficult if they can't identify what raspberry is. After the presentation and tour, you can go shopping in the Cho Marketplace, which is all their yummy products, including retail bars, drinking chocolates, commercial baking squares, and beautifully designed gift boxes. So that was a really awesome tour. It was very, very informative, especially if you're a chocolate lover coming in and learning all about the farming of cocoa and then how the chocolate is actually processed and made. The factory itself is relatively small, but it's just kind of neat to see all the equipment in place and just following through the whole process of conching and uh, then tempering the chocolate is kind of pretty neat. And if you come through the tour, you get a $10 credit at the end that you can spend on whatever you want here at the Cho Marketplace. I ended up getting these three bars here for three bucks, including my $10 credit.